I'm Molly Pesci, and this is Barnes & Noble Tagged. Pop the cork. Today's show announces the most recent Barnes & Noble Recommends selection. Considering our last choice, the Physic Book of Deliverance Dane became a major bestseller. You are going to want to get, drumroll please, The Day the Falls Stood Still by Kathy Marie Buchanan. Kathy Marie Buchanan grew up in Niagara Falls, Ontario, the setting of her novel, The Day the Falls Stood Still. The overriding lore of her childhood was the story of Red Hill, Niagara's most famous river man, upon which she based her lead character, Tom Cole. Barnes & Noble bookseller Amber Stubblefield described The Day the Falls Stood Still as a compelling and beautiful story of a woman with pluck and a heart as big as the river itself. I loved it even as I cried. Not bad praise for a first novel. Enough prologue. Kathy Marie Buchanan is in the Barnes & Noble studio, and we are going to meet her right now. Kathy Marie Buchanan, you've been tagged. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, the book is wonderful. But I have to ask you, okay, mother of three, you're living in Toronto. This is your very first novel, and it is a Barnes & Noble recommend selection. I gotta hear your story. Um, well, I've often been asked if I grew up wanting to be a writer, mm -hmm. and the answer is a definitive no. I oh. spent my high school years disgracing myself in English, <laughs> often <laughs> getting upwards of 20% deducted on exams for spelling mistakes. Um, when it came so time, there's hope for us bad spellers, yes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Spell check has been invented. Yes. So when it came time to, uh, to select my courses for university, I did it using the criteria that I didn't have to write, spell a thing. So I graduated with a degree in biochemistry and then my MBA and spent the bulk of my working life, my non-writing work life at IBM. I took a creative writing course at night school on a whim really and soon enough I wanted more time to write than that little gap that existed between scrubbing my children clean and falling into bed myself. So tell us about The Day the Falls Stood Still. <clears throat> the book is set in Niagara Falls in 1915. It's at its core, it's a love story between a privileged young woman and a not-so-privileged young man. Um, he's a man who has a deep, deep reverence for the river and also a uncanny ability to predict that river. And they're men that really know the river intimately. So at the turn of the century, for the first time, massive amounts of water were being diverted away from the river and falls. And my river man, with his deep reverence for the river, you know, struggles with that. And there is. Um, I mean, he is what we would today call a conservationist or an environmentalist. You grew up kind of right within the mists of Niagara Falls. Right. I is that why you set the book there? Or, I mean, have you always had a fascination for it? When you grow up in Niagara Falls, it's pretty hard to escape the lore surrounding the heroics mm -hmm. of Red Hill. Um, there's an old barge stuck in the Upper Rapids, um, just a, a short ways back from the brink of the falls. And I grew up knowing that in 1918, Red Hill, um, rescued the men that mar marooned there. So tell me about the moment you got the news that the day the falls stood still was a Barnes & Noble recommend selection. Well, I was sitting at home in my office writing away and um, my editors from Voice called and with the wonderful, wonderful news that the day the falls stood still was a Barnes & Noble recommend selection. I was, of course, thrilled and honored um, and humbled too that The Day the Falls Stood Still would join the ranks of other Barnes & Noble recommend selection. There was a bit of terror as well. Um, <laughs> readers would crack open the book with a level of expectation and I do feel the weight of that. Well, that's great. The, the book is called The Day the Falls Stood Still. It's out this week and uh, it's really wonderful. Congratulations again. Barnes & Noble recommend selection. Thank you so much for having me. Here's a tagged close-up on two men of style who certainly left the world a better looking place. One of the most talented and influential couturiers of his time, Yves Saint Laurent began his career as Christian Dior's protege and went on to become a legendary arbiter of 20th century style. Saint Laurent's extraordinary taste went well beyond the world of fashion and in this lavish volume, the eight splendid homes he shared with friend and lifelong business partner, Pierre Berger, are presented in immaculate detail. Notoriously shy, the designer and Berger lived in luxury, surrounded by incomparable collections of furniture and art. From the serene interiors of their apartment on the Rue Babylone, 
to the incandescent beauty of the Villa Marjorelle in Marrakesh, Berger and Saint Laurent's sensibilities truly came alive. Showcasing 19th century French decor, important paintings by modern and romantic artists, and masterpieces of furniture, sculpture, and silver, ranging from the Renaissance to the Art Deco era. Though the homes presented here are now empty, the private world of Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger is a testament to the rare union of passion, elegance, and supreme connoisseurship. And that's our tag close-up. Every week, we scan the recent offerings in the world of books, music, and movies. This week, my top tags include a Trixie, a Trial, Spies, Mysterious Bones, and a Queen not from royalty. The knee bone is connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone is connected to my number five tag, 206 Bones. New York Times bestselling author Kathy Reichs is back with her 12th novel, featuring forensic anthropologist Tempe Brennan. With her usual combo of cutting edge forensic science and stubborn heroics, Reichs fans will not be disappointed. The jury is in on my number four tag, Alex Cross's trial by the prolific James Patterson. Alex Cross gets transfixed by a generations old story of the harrowing experience of his great grandfather, who was in Eudora, Mississippi during a trial involving the Ku Klux Klan. Of course, it's told in the trademark breakneck speed of any Alex Cross novel. Crowning my number three tag is Queen Latifah's Persona album. Latifah's last two albums consisted entirely of jazz and soul standards, but this time, the queen is ready to rap again and has assembled a who's who of hip hop royalty for her latest effort. Seeing double at number two is Duplicity, the movie starring Julia Roberts and Clive Owen just out on DVD. This drama traces the illicit love affair between two spies turned corporate operatives. They scheme and double cross each other, yet manage to make romantic sparks fly as they jeopardize their biggest mission. Top dog this week at number one is A Big Little Life, a memoir of a joyful dog, in which best-selling author Dean Koontz presents a humorous, poignant portrait of his remarkable dog, Trixie, a dog that many describe as otherworldly. You go, Trixie. And those are my top tags for this week. They say these Barnes & Noble recommend selections are unputdownable. Let's see. Hey, hey, come back here, please. I, I, I promise I won't put you down again. Huh? It, if you want more information, you can go to bn.com slash recommends. See you next time on Barnes & Noble Tagged.